Let's talk about a theology of love tonight. Starting back at the beginning. The beginning begins with God. Okay? And the beginning point, the first principle of all biblical thinking is that God is. And when we read about God in the Bible, we also read that He is a personal God. Very important concept to grasp. You know, many people have a conception of God that's impersonal, where God is like the force. He's the all, the universal all. He's like a something that permeates all things, but is not a being, is not a personal being. What does it mean to be personal? Personhood, you know, when we speak of something being personal versus impersonal, we're talking about um, primarily the concept, it, it centers around this concept of relationship, of being able to relate to another on a personal level. That means communication, sharing, feeling, <clears throat> awareness of, uh, you know, of what's happening to another. That ability to be, you know, one entity here and to carry on a relationship at a personal level with another entity. Where does it come from? It starts with God himself. You know, God's revealed as a relational God even before he ever created anybody. And this is one of the key reasons people are mystified. I know I was as a non-Christian. Now, what's with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Is this polytheism or what? You know, it's the Trinity. And then I read a book a number of years later by a thinker that I admired named Francis Schaeffer. And he said, you know, I wouldn't be a Christian today if it wasn't for the doctrine of the Trinity. Because if it wasn't for the Trinity, then God would be dependent on his creation uh, for a relationship. To be, how could you be personal, a personal being, and also be self-existent, which means that you're completely, uh, you know, don't have any needs, you can meet all your own needs. How is that even possible? It's only possible in a triune God. This is one of the things, when you, so we read Jesus, you know, in... John 17, speaking to God the Father and talking about the love that you always had for me before the foundations of the earth. God has never needed anyone else to meet this relational need. He meets his own relational. He relates to himself. So there's a very unique beginning point there. Well, it's not only that he's personal, it's not only that he relates, but that he's characterized as, as primarily a God of love. 1 John 4, 7, love comes from God. Or in verse 8, God is love. Not that love is God, but that God is love. In other words, love is how you could really characterize it. More love it than we will ever understand. We don't even have a category for the type of love that God has. A totally self-giving being who lives for what he can do for others, who lives for what he can give out. We can only imagine that. We've never experienced it. That's totally outside of our frame of reference. And this is the beginning point, according to the Bible. This is where it all emanates out from. So then, of course, God created humans also as personal beings. When we read that he created humans in his own image, the image of God means that he built this quality of personhood into humans. And so it's there. There's nothing anyone can do about that. We're real personal beings. We are not like the rest of the animal kingdom. Yeah, we have, a, we have a biological component that we're, we're actually a hybrid between what God is, a spirit being, and the animal kingdom. We're sort of a, a, a new type there. Part animal, but within, within is this person, person, the soul, the spirit. And so when I look at another person, 
it's very important, you know, our, our actions flow out of our assumptions. Our belief systems govern the way we live. And we may not be able to articulate what my beliefs are, per, per se, and yet they actually do control the way I see the world, uh, the way I interpret it and understand it, and how I ultimately act. So when I look at another person, what is it that I'm looking at? What am I seeing when I see another person there? Am I just looking at an object? Is it just a physical object? Is it a sack of juices? Or is it a being? Is it a personal being? If it is a personal being, how did it get to be that way? You know, our answer biblically is that God has created humans in his own image as personal beings. And that means right in the fabric, right in the makeup of what we are, is relationship. And so, if we connect the dots, what we're realizing is that the whole concept of relating, relationship, goes back to our Creator, to God Himself. That the universe, although it has matter in it and energy, that in its essence, that the universe is a personal universe. Because it comes from a personal God. Unfortunately, of course, the story goes on then that our relational ability has been massively damaged. We read in the early, this, this is the significance of the first parts of the Bible which describe how human, humans decided to move God out of the center and move self into the center. And when self is at the center, when I'm living basically for me, true relationship begins to break down at that point. <clears throat> this is the author I referred to earlier, some of his thoughts about this very problem where we have shifted away from having got my life centered around God to being centered around me and self. He says, when God turns inward to Himself, He's a trinity. But when we turn inward, there's no one there to answer. This not only causes psychological problems, but it also destroys my relationship with others. People without God hang too much on their personal relationships and they crush and break. He says, if I acknowledge that I am not really God and that since the fall we're all sinful, then I can have true human relationships without battering myself to pieces because they're not sufficient in themselves or because they're not perfect. So in other words, we have taken upon ourselves a role of total independence where, you know, I'm living my life and I live it the way I want to live it. A position that is identical to the position of God Himself who says, I'm God and I live and do what I want to do and live. Nobody tells God what He has to do. He's God. And so we have taken that position upon ourselves and tried to become, in a sense, our own gods, the decision makers, the shot callers, the captain of our own ship. The problem is we're not self-existent like God is. And so what we end up with when we go within, he says there's no one to answer back, emptiness. And so we find that it's replaced by a desperate need for the meeting of that empty you know, hole in there. And for that, we turn to relationships with other people. So clearly, you don't have to be a Christian to have relationships. Anyone can see that. 